Hi, my name's Amy and welcome to Warpveen Studios where chaos reigns. I recently had my first game of 9th edition 40k and my Black Legion got wiped out almost to the last man by my friend's Ultramarines. Um, as a result of this, I've now decided to renounce my chaos-loving ways and get myself right with the Emperor. Hmm. Uh, nah. On second thoughts, I don't think righteousness is really my style. However, as a little Christmas treat, let's take a look at painting up the Goody Two Shoes Marines themselves with an Ultramarines Primaris Lieutenant. I'm going to split this video into two halves as I want to focus on the blue power armor and some red robes in this one and we can take a look at uh, freehand in depth and also the metallics in the next part. First I'm going to spray the whole model with McCrag Blue. They sell this in cans so if you're painting up a lot of these guys and don't have an airbrush it's probably worth picking that up for the time save. Next it's pin washing time. I use a small tip brush for this and some Drakenhaft Nightshade. Um, you can use Null Noil or even Agrax Earth Shade if you want a more grim, dark, desaturated look. But keeping the shading blue makes the final thing pop so much more in that cartoony, pristine armor just came out of the factory style. Just drop it into all of the recesses and don't worry if you make mistakes as you can cover them up later. Now I use my crag blue to tidy up anywhere the wash got out of control before I start highlighting. Loyalist Space Marines are some of the best models for practicing edge highlighting on as they have so many smooth defined lines. Heavy metal painters like Darren Latham often talk about having painted loads of them just to be able to nail those super precise highlights. Of course there are plenty of other styles of painting that don't require so many precise edge highlights but if it's a skill you want to get down I definitely recommend painting up some Loyalist Marines every now and then. I'm going to start with Calgar Blue and lay down an initial highlight. No need to worry about getting those razor thin lines at this point. You should focus more on getting even lines. This might take you a few passes to pull off but if you go too thick you can always go back to the base colour to tidy it up. For the shoulder pads, I'm doing the heavy metal style edge highlighting where there's not actually an edge thing. Uh, try to leave a gap so there's a line of shade between the trim and the highlight. Next I take some Fenrisian Grey for my second set of highlights. I use some Liquitex Flow Aid with this to help it run off my brush. Now this is optional but I find it really helps with edge highlighting to get consistent flow of paint. Just remember to wick off your brush on some paper towel or it could run everywhere. This time I stick within the lines I've already done and make the highlights thinner. It's easier to get those very thin lines when you have the thicker line as a guide. With this highlight you can ignore some of the areas of the model that naturally catch less light. At this point I decided the armour didn't have quite enough depth to it so I'm going to add a glaze of Cantor Blue on some of the lower sections of the armour. You can do this before highlighting but so long as you're careful not to glaze over the areas you've already done it should be fine. After this I take some Arctic Blue and hit some of the brightest highlights. You can substitute this for Blue Horror by Games Workshop. Aim for the corners where the lines intersect and anywhere where more light may be hitting. Particularly pick out details on the helmet as this is where you want to draw the most attention. Well that's how I paint Ultramarine's power armour. So next up we'll take a look at the red robes and the other details. I base the robe, the scabbard and the shield with Mephiston Red. This is slightly different to the official scheme, but I think the red will make him stand out as a character. It may contradict the Codex Astartes though, so if this angers any Ultramarines purists, uh, please leave me a comment calling me a filthy heretic. 
I also paint a quarter of this tilting shield in red at this stage. For the shadows on the red, I mix 50-50 Mephiston Red and Incubi Darkness and glaze it into the recesses. As Incubi Darkness is a dark green, it contrasts really well with the red and makes it look much more vibrant. I'm going to glaze it with very thin layers as I want the transition to be as smooth as possible. I also pin wash it around the edges. Then I add a tiny bit of black into the mix to darken it down a bit and come back in for a second round of shading, just reinforcing the darkest shadows. Any transitions that are too abrupt can be glazed back over with Mephiston Red, although we'll keep smoothing out as we go. A 50-50 mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet next, kept very thin. Run it over the raised areas now on the cloth and very carefully over the higher areas of the shields and scabbards. Next some pure Evil Sun Scarlet to build up that rich, festively appropriate red on the robe. You'll just need a small amount of this on your shield and scabbard. Next, I'm taking a 50-50 mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Cadian Flesh Tone and giving it an edge highlight. On these softer folds, it's less an edge highlight and more of a line down the highest parts of the cloth. Keep your hand very steady by bracing yourself on your desk when painting these, although the first one doesn't have to be too precise. On the scabbard, to make it look like worn leather, I'm also going to add some scratches with this colour. As the rest of the marine is so clean, I want to contrast that with some texture on this part. Next, I take some pure Cadian Flesh Stone and do the whole thing again. Uh, thin the lines this time. Remember to keep your hands steady. I'm actually really happy with how these highlights on the robe turn out. Not that long ago I was looking really enviously at the work of other painters who could pull off these really smooth highlights on red cloth like this. Um, I know around nine months later I'm pretty comfortable doing it myself. As with all painting, no matter how much it might feel that you'll never be able to achieve it, all it takes is some good focus practice to get there. Finally, we take some Kislev Flesh and put some tiny dots here and there. Now to bring the saturation in that red back, I take a 1-3 to three mix of Blood Angels Red and Contrast Medium and glaze it over everything. That's the blue and the red done, the main things I wanted to cover in this video. I'm just going to blast through some of the extra details now so we can get straight to the fun stuff next time. I take Mournfang Brown and base the pouches and the grip of his sword, as well as all of the skulls, scrolls and the opposite corner of the tilting shield, which is going to be yellow. Brown is just a better base colour to build up your yellow on than blue. I then use Baylor Brown to edge highlight all the pouches and the sword grip as well as layering over the tilting shield. I'm going to build up scratches on the pouches, the same as I did on the scabbard. Then I hit the pouches and the sword grip with the final highlighted screaming skull. I then run some Agrax Earthshade into the recesses to finish up the brown leather parts. I take some Zandri Dust and go over all the skulls and scrolls, leaving brown showing in only the very deepest recesses. 
I highlight these parts with first a shabty bone and then screaming skull. Um, if you've been following this far, I hope you're able to figure that out yourself because I accidentally did not record the footage. I finished up those parts with some dots of pallid witch flesh. Then I take some black and go over the undersuit, the cross on the shield and the belt, as well as running some into the eye sockets and rebasing all of the parts that are going to be metal. I highlight the black undersuit, belt and shield details with Mechanicus Standard Grey, then Administratum Grey. I base all the wax blobs on the purity seals with Screamer Pink, then give them a quick drop of Agrax Earthshade. I re-establish my Screamer Pink. Then highlight with Pink Horror. Cadian Flesh Tone. And finally a couple of dots of Kislev Flesh. Then I take a wonderful mix of Volipers Pink and Contrast Medium and glaze them all to restore the colour saturation. Well, that's part one of my Ultramarines Primaris Lieutenant. I hope you enjoyed that and return for the next one, which should be dropping around New Year's Day. Happy Christmas to all who celebrate it. And please, at this festive time of year, don't forget to tie yourself in bed tightly tonight as we lose so many to the Christmas demons every year. Stay safe. Wait, what's that?